Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pomisher. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't done it yet, hit subscribe. Come back over and over and over again. That's what some of our creators do. And see who we're hanging with. And uh, we're here at ICCCon 3, hosted by Terrence Baker in the Independent Creators Connection. And we're hanging with author J.D. Demers. Former Hanging With Web Show author, and Ben, you got big news coming down the pike, huh? Oh, uh, hopefully. Yeah, there you go, there <laughs> you go. It's so, in the works. <laughs> all right, well, uh, what have you been up to, man? It's been almost a year. Uh, I've been working hard on the third book um, while trying to you know, raise a newborn baby, too. That's That's been a tough one. That they, they, they uh, As I recall, that's a bit of a full-time job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it's it's been fun. My son moved here he, from my previous marriage. He moved in with me. He's already joined the National Guard. Awesome. So I'm excited about that. And he's Very writing cool. himself. So. And he's writing, too. Yeah. I, you know... We're going to publish a short story of his... Oh, uh, love it. Love it. Love it when they kind of come over and they want to play in the creative arts with us. Yeah. It's always very, very nice. So let's uh, let's remind everybody out there on the web about the about your books. Um, well, right so now. Let's, let's start with what's in your hand because he's got a he's got a. This is <laughs> by the way. This is all of you college kids out there because this is the internet. A lot of young people, right? See, when you complain about that term paper, this is what we do <laughs> regularly. So. All right. Um, this is Awakening and Revelation. These books one and two, uh, okay. The Hunt Chronicles. Um, it's a kind of like a zombie survival uh, series, and the main character is immune, and they're trying to get him to Hoover Dam so he can uh, they can hopefully create a vaccine. Immune. Yes. He's wow. Immune. I, yeah. You know, there, that's a that's sort of a rarity in in the zombie genre. Is that immune? The immunity. Yeah. So, um, so what zombies? Lots of monsters to choose from. Why zombies? What what drew you to this particular uh, catalyst for storytelling? Well, um, I, I enjoy horror. I enjoy suspense. Suspense is really not more than horror because to me it's horrific to be to not know what's coming around the corner. Yeah. Um, and with zombies, you get to do that. And of course, my zombies aren't the average Romero zombies. They're different, and they call them zombies because they're dead. What makes your zombies stand out? Um, well, the virus in this case, which is actually not explained in the first book, it's explained in the second book. Um, you gotta get both. Yeah. See, it, you gotta it, get both. Well, it used to be one book, but I had to split them up. It was too long. Um, <laughs> but uh, the the virus actually repairs the human. The, 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 the dead body so that, okay. that's one big difference meaning like if you get a brain shot on a zombie eventually it'll consume itself to heal that part of the brain that will get it up and moving again okay so in that way if, if, if it's healing the body um, what keeps you from just going back to being normal uh, well they're dead um, so the, that that, tends, part, that that tends to do it. That part of the brain is, is that gone. That part's gone. Okay. Um, really, only basic motor functions. Okay. And it's it's basically the virus is doing what it can to survive. Living off of it, that. And, and to reproduce, it needs to infect more people. For for those um, of you that don't know, there's actually science there. There's actually a fungus that does that. Yes, and that does I, it to insects. I have a doctor, I have a microbiologist, and all these people that I tap for to make this as realistic as possible. As possible. And uh, and and now you have a guy that's trying to work his way across the country. Yes. He's immune. He can't be a zombie. Can't. Nope. It's impossible. Okay. That's um, survival for him. You got you got people who want to want to know what's in him. Yeah. You got zombies. That, they don't like you said. It's basic. The the virus is living through the body, so they just they're killing to kill. Well, and and 
you know, besides all that, I have another kind of curveball in there, and that is actually what's on these covers. It's called a scab. These are people that are get infected with the virus, uh-huh. but aren't killed when they get infected, and so they kind of mutate into a barbaric uh, Neanderthal. Cyril. Yes, very. They're wow. cunning. They're, they're not intelligent. They didn't use guns. Can't use cars, but they they will make. Are uh, barbaric weapons and use those. They're very sneaky. They and they will make your life not so pleasant. Yeah, they're actually the what a lot of my fans say are the scariest thing about the books because you don't know when they're coming because they'll sneak, they'll now, wait. If, they'll, if they were to die, do they? They will become a zombie they will if they become die. A zombie. But it's very hard to kill them because the virus actually keeps because they're still alive. Well, it's it doing better. Repairs them they're real alive, quick. so yeah. it's actually living better, right? Yeah. It's like a penthouse apartment for the virus. And my my zombie Zombies eat more than meat because, realistically, you know we're in the only science. Kill so much. Well, it's not just that, but in order to keep going, you have to keep eating. Yeah. And so they'll eat anything, vegetation, any, anything that's edible. Zombies will eat in my world. So wow. you'll co- you'll come to an area and see all the grass gone or all the low lying branches gone, and you're like, oh, there's zombies in the area. Nice, so. nice. Now. You're working on the third book. Yes, almost done. Almost released. Almost it's released. Final okay. editing, yes. And uh, we're told you've got news on these stories now. Yes. Uh, so, World Wide Web, J.D. Demers, J.D. Demers, <laughs> two billion people on the World Wide Web, six of them are watching the show. <laughs> Tell them your news. Uh, well, maybe two of my fans might come. Two, up there. two of the fans <laughs> there. It's, Two, um, two Adina's friends and my parents. So that's that's it. We're done. <laughs> my uh, audiobook producer was contacted by people he knows in the industry because he works in film industry. Okay. And they had listened to my book, and they uh, wanted to talk about maybe making it into a movie. So they negotiated with me on a, a movie option. Which, you know, at first I got really excited about, and then I got really down about to find out how many authors get movie options. It happens all the time, so it's nothing uncommon. Um, but after the op- after we negotiated and the option was signed, things are moving ahead. They have some financing already. They have a screenplay. Wow. They, they got a really good screenplay writer out of, uh, screenplay writer out of L.A. that went and turned the first book into a screenplay. Uh, I reviewed most of it, haven't finished it because I've been working on my third book. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, they've got their IMDb up, they have it up on Slate, they're looking for actors now, they're looking for more financing, of course. Fantastic. So it's not a done deal, but it's moving. It's and moving. When I talk to them, they're like, wow, this is moving a lot faster than we thought. Yeah. So hopefully. Well, and you know, it's, it, a lot of writers have the goal of being optioned someday. But you know, being optioned doesn't mean your movie's going to get made. It just nope. means that they can make it. They have the option. Um, but uh, it, it's great when you hear that they're moving and that there's, you know, um, what you've read so far. I know you haven't read it all or gotten all the way through. What you've read so far, what do you think? Uh, what do you think of, of where they're going with it? Are they taking your story in, in the direction that you're pretty happy with? Um, they have definitely stayed true to the story. Um, and Not a lot of writers can say that sometimes. Though. You know, and, right. and which I gave them freedom. I was like, yeah. you know, you make it work for a movie. And they did. They changed parts. They combined some parts. and, and But it's, it's real good, and it, it follows the storyline. More yeah. zombies coming to a theater near you, maybe. <laughs> Could be. As far as you know, we're telling the truth. Um, third book. Um, so... Uh, it was supposed to be released two weeks ago, and I was supposed to have it ready for the show. Unfortunately, there was a major editing error on my part. I sent for the We do that a lot, <laughs> folks. Without a good editor, yeah. I sent the final review to one of the editors to do the final review, and I sent them the first draft. And so they spent a long time on it picking it apart, wondering yeah, why I never made changes and this and that. And we He's finally just stubborn. We finally figured out what was going oh sorry. We finally figured out what was going on. And so now we're in the process of going back and now we still have the the third iteration of, yeah. of the book. But um, so it should be hopefully with be done within a week or two and out to get published and Hopefully, in three weeks, I'll have my book release party. Terrific, terrific. Where are you going to be next? Where can uh, readers and fans find you? What, where will you be tabling or signing? Or I believe, I'm, I'm not, I, I will most likely do the next 
Space Coast Comic Con. Awesome. Um, also, I was just told that they invited me to do a book, uh, some book thing at the mall December 9th, oh, Melbourne cool. Square Mall. Awesome. Um, they're actually going to have a lot of authors there, I guess. Oh, like, wow. Um, so. Hey, great place to get a book, the mall. <laughs> At least that day. Well, that they got day. they don't have bookstores anymore in the yeah, mall. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, everybody they have them. They're they're on people Apple's phone. Oh, look, I want to buy a book. Oh, it'll be home when I get there. See how fast yep. that happens. Um, we got to wrap it up. That's my shut up card. Uh, but we're gonna remind everybody that in the description down below, we're gonna put all of JD's links again to his Facebook and his uh, social media as well as to Amazon and the places where you can find his books online. As we wrap it up, we want to say thanks to Something Unique Magazine, Wordfire Press, Space Coast Comics, Famous Faces and Funnies, and our new friends at Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason. I'm GW Fomager. We have been hanging here at ICCCon 3 with author J.D. Demers. Remember, folks, subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next.